You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the Cricket Podcast where we will be reviewing the first one day international between India and England. A game which England won and then lost. (laughs) I'm... (laughs) I'm Jack Hope, and to go over it all, I'm joined by Ross Legg. How are you doing, Ross? Yeah, nonplussed, really, mate. <laughs> the, the, the ODI series is completely pointless, so um, I'm, I'm glad that we get to talk about the absolute shambles that was today's performance. Uh, and Max Rowe Brown, how are you doing, Max Rowe Brown? I'm genuinely quite annoyed. I thought I didn't care, but actually, I'm just livid at what I've seen. Are you? I yeah. I I think it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely pathetic. It was... <laughs> I thought it was really funny. Um, <laughs> I yeah yeah. I, I it's, it's it's you saw the best of the England one day team mm. over the last four or five years, and then you saw like the worst of everything else they've accomplished, <laughs> <laughs> all wrapped up into like forty overs. Um, Ross, before we get into explaining what happened and, and and telling our story, have you got any messages for our listeners? Yes, you should like and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube or follow us on Spotify and Apple and leave us a review if you're listening on there. Um, Also follow us on social media sites, Twitter and Instagram, at The Cricket Pod. Um, We love your YouTube comments. I think we've got over 5,000 on our most recent uh, recent (laughs) ones talking talking about Virat Kohli, KL Rahul, etc. So uh, keep them coming and um, keep telling Max he looks like Ed Sheeran because uh, he absolutely loves it. (laughs) Um, yeah, and be one of those cross-format heroes. Like us on 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 YouTube and follow us on Spotify oh, and on nice. Apple. That's that what we nice. want. Um, Max, do you want to do a quick recap of this game to set the table? The Max summary. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so um, well, India, India and England met for the first instalment of this. Uh, really, as you said, uh, Ross, important ODI series, and um, it was really a story of two diametric diametrically opposed approaches to uh to building in innings so india sort of uh they they started well, they were measured in their start they built steadily and um and darwin and Kohli batted uh very well and um and very steadily to to build a really solid platform um and after a little wobble Krunal and Rahul really uh, well set off some fireworks and propelled India to a a, a reasonable, but I I would say probably quite chaseable three hundred and seventeen on a on a decent batting pitch and a not particularly huge ground. Um, England's approach was very different. They exploded from the start. Johnny Bairstow swashbuckling ninety four, uh, ably supported by Jason Roy, sent England to one hundred and thirty five for none off uh, what 13 14 overs and um and England then proceeded to very steadily much as India had uh, steadily built we steadily fell apart and the ravages of time eroding away at uh, England's <laughs> England's sturdy foundations ultimately ending in a in a fairly comprehensive defeat yes that that is that is what happened uh, but how did it happen let's start i guess at the beginning with Shikhar Dawan, um, a slightly maligned Shikhar Dawan, coming off the back of his sort of one appearance in the T20 internationals where everyone kind of blamed him for everything that went wrong. Um, he looked pretty good today. He, in his element, I thought, opening the batting for the one-day team, Ross. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's got all the foundation, right? I think it came up, he's hit 17 ODI centuries, so he's clearly quite good, um, kind of in that role anyway. And I think just being there... Being the way he plays, I think he's just quite a nice batsman to watch. He might not play some of those beautiful cover drives you're ever going to see, but he picks up the ball really quite well um, and he can hit a big ball. Um, What I did enjoy, though, was uh, how their approach was about setting that strong foundation. Rohit Sharma, what were you doing? (laughs) The, the, the Ben Stokes ball probably one of the worst balls of the day, and he's managed to not move any of his feet and just waft it like he was. I don't, I don't even know what he was trying to do, um, and ultimately uh, peril um, his peril. I think it's an interesting one. Well, it wasn't an interesting one really, but I, I wonder whether Rohit Sharma's demise and Rohit Sharma's pretty bad innings, probably overall. Uh, what do he get? Twenty or forty something balls. Um, 
I wonder if that was because he was in a lot of pain. Um, he did get hit on the elbow pretty hard by Wood fairly early in his innings. I'd imagine um, that would hurt. Yeah, and he is going to be out of the next two ODIs. So, you know, maybe he gets a little bit of a pass there. But yeah, it was, a, it was, it was like he wasn't really feeling it today, Rohit Sharma. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was feeling something. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cody, Max, the best ODI batter in the world. Apparently so. I, the only surprise for me today was that he didn't make 100 because that looked as nailed on as anything I've seen in, in a long time. And uh, he just decided to middle the ball to the only fielder on the leg side, basically, didn't he? That was uh, <laughs> just, about it, the time, just about the time when India would probably have been looking to kick on. And you were thinking that, you know, at, at this point with nine wickets in hand, you really want to really want to put your foot on the gas. And, uh, and Kohli then just just hold out to uh to the lone man on the leg side boundary so uh, arguably quite unfortunate um but he showed all his class today that's for sure yeah he was he was really good um showed all of his skills um it was interesting right because it was a good deck to bat on but england did have a couple of chances and uh moeen ali put down darwan when he was on what 55 mm-hmm. um, something like that yeah and it was a pretty easy catch and i think um when I want to know what you guys feel when you drop a catch. So when I drop a catch, it feels like a bit of a gut punch. Like I, kind of, yeah, my heart kind of sinks and I'm a bit just like, actually, I'm better than that. I should have been able to do that. And then every boundary that is hit kind of after that, that's against it's, you. It's 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 an it's another blow. It's another yeah. bit where you're just like, oh god, the, the guilt, the pang of guilt in the stomach kind of gets there. Um, it wasn't a good day for Moeen, really. Um, so how do you two react when you drop catches like that? I don't really care. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I think with drop catches, and I think this applies to people at an individual level and, and, and to people on the TV. Um, one, nobody really means to drop a catch. You just have to accept that a certain number of the opportunities that someone has are going to be dropped. Um, it's, a, it's totally down to luck. Um, so... You know, there's not really a lot you can do about it apart from practice. And I can guarantee you, Mo and Ali has practiced catching the ball. Um, <laughs> so, so this is, just, you know, it's just one of those things. It is kind of, it was kind of weird. And, and there is, it, it's, it makes a good narrative to be like, oh, if England had taken these catches and 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 and, and had to, held their chances, then Shikhar Dhawan would have scored loads less runs. But it doesn't really work like that. In the end, it, it, it's just the randomness of the universe produces occasional moments of brilliance and occasional moments of total uh, disaster. Um, and we just we saw a little bit of a disaster from Rowan Ali with, with that <laughs> dropped catch. Uh, and anyone who's ever played cricket will know that. And I, I think that's the way that top-level players conceptualise dropping the ball. Complete uh, dissociation from I think, well, yeah, <laughs> your yeah, own that's ability. What, that's, that's the mental space you want to be in. You just want to know that you have done everything you can in preparation for that to have taken the catch. Um, in my case, that isn't a lot, but I don't really care that much about my cricket. Mo and Ali, he'll he'll have practiced that catch probably fifteen times, twenty times before that match. Um, so I don't, you know, I can't really can't really do anything about it, can you? Um, it did those two wickets. Shikha Darwan and Kohli fell in reasonably quick succession, succession mm. uh, and that left India teetering a little bit, didn't it, Max? Yeah, it was a really weird passage of play that because you were you were looking at India and thinking 100 and, what, 160 for one, I think it was off uh, about 30 overs, and the old cliche is uh, these days seems to be double your score at 30 will be roughly what you will end on, and that is ultimately what happened but for the next 10 overs it we were looking at like wondering whether they'd even get to 280 because the brakes were just put on completely it was a combination i think of england bowled very well um ben stokes and sam curran gave absolutely no width to to the new batsman um kl rahul looked like he was gonna reprise his role as ball eater in chief uh before the last five overs of the innings and um, I just, I, I'm not really, I'm not really sure what what happened. I think India kind of got got stuck a bit. Um, well, I guess the question is, was it bad death bowling after that? I mean, Max, mm, um, yeah, because they did end up getting up to 317. Was it bad death bowling or was it good India hitting? 
Well, as as always, it was both, wasn't it? It was uh, it Boring. was bad death bowling. <laughs> England didn't have really uh, much of a concerted plan. It, they were spraying it a bit all over the place. Uh, they probably didn't try uh, Yorkers too much. Probably, you know, concerned. It's it's a, a very small margin of error, isn't it? Going going with the Yorker, despite the fact that it looked like there might be a, starting to be a little bit of reverse swing. So it was a surprise that uh, they didn't try and bowl a little bit fuller. Um, and and those first few balls to, for some reason, Sam Curran decided that he would greet Colonel Pandya to the wicket with some tame short bowling, which ultimately got him oh, to get his, in, get his eye in very quickly. So uh, it was there was a bit of a bit of that, but also when you have two batsmen who are creaming it everywhere, it makes it very difficult to uh, to try and hold that death bowling line. So you know you can you could say credit to India batsmen for forcing England off there. Off their lengths, but equally England, uh, yeah, they. I think I think, England, I think everything England that shit. they did well in the previous ten overs, they did wrong the ten overs after that. I, I genuinely think England went to absolute bits. I don't think that Krunal Pandya is that good of a batsman. Kael Rahul way out of nick, and we managed to. They scored at ten and over for the last ten. That just as well as it's pretty good batting, but like Krunal Pandya was smashing it all over the place. But England bowled into that, it bowled it to them kind of mm. thing. And I think it was really disappointing. And it's actually been one of England's problems ac- across white ball cricket for a little while. Even when we were, even when we bat really, really well, teams are typically scoring more runs against us, as Jack has spoken about in the past. Um, but I thought it was really poor today. There um, was there was one other thing that happened around that time, which I I'd be interested to see what you think. Whether you thought it may have contribu- contributed to England's uh, sudden uh, demise in the field, which was Owen Morgan going off with his uh, his split webbing injury. Uh, do you think do you think that may have uh, affected England in the field and their sort of thinking and their plans and whether uh, or, or it was it was just coincidental? I don't, I think, don't so. think so. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 the England will have gone in with a plan. I I, I think. We have seen regularly in the last long time, really, in the last long time, <laughs> that um, England are a bit thin on the ground when it comes to top quality death bowling, and especially mm. so when Joffre Archer isn't there to do half the work for them. Yeah. Um, we have never really seen Mark Wood do it as a death bowler. He's always been you know, a little bit inconsistent. He has times when he looks excellent because he can bowl very fast and in the right circumstances, very fast cricket balls are difficult to hit. <laughs> um, it wasn't the right circumstances today. Uh, Rashi, um, uh, oh, blimey, I mean? I've, Adil, Adil Rashid is not, has never really impressed in, in the death bowling aspect of, of of being a spinner as he it's not really his game he tends to be uh yeah the middle first change guy. middle overs yeah yeah um and I mean, then... he often bowls through doesn't he he'll often bowl his 10 overs in, all in a row and just tie the uh, game then, up and then we've recently spoken about how tom curran uh <laughs> sam curran and and ben stokes all have fairly subpar records as a death bowler who can England turn to, though, is the question. I mean, they they just sort of have to hope that the Archer comes back for important tournaments and isn't badly injured, because they they have tried a reasonable amount of that player pool. The next best guy is probably Chris Jordan, but he did, wasn't very good in the in the in the T Twenty series. So England's best hope is probably to take wickets earlier <laughs> in the game somehow. Um, I have to say, though, overall, looking at the fifty over piece. 317 was probably a below par score batting first on that wicket. And I, I, I think Morgan said it after the game and I agree with him. Uh, I think they'd have been very happy uh, that India walked off with only 317 on the board uh, because we saw for long spells of that first innings and for a reasonable spell of the second inning. So that was actually a, a, a you know, a bit of a road. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, halfway through, I was looking at thinking India are nailed on for 350 plus here and, yeah. We should say we should say as well that like it was a pretty good debut from Krunal Panja. And he was obviously quite emotional after fastest, afterwards as well. Fastest fifty um, for a for a debutant. Exactly, yeah. And that's like 
Well, I mean, that, you, you can't really have a better day with the bat coming in at that position in the in the in the team, can you? He um, did his job, right? He did his job. It's just that bit where he, he's he's there to hit those balls, and if England are going to put him well, there, he, he's he going to smash did, them away. He probably did his job and plus thirty yeah. runs. To be honest, <laughs> like it was quite a big job. If that if that was his job, then like he deserves some kind of promotion. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, you know, they got up to 317, which looked competitive. Uh, then England came out to bat. And it, after 13 overs, it looked like it was game over, basically, didn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this is this is a bit for me. So the opening pair, I think they put on what, 134 off of 14 overs or something very close to that. Mm. Um England are brutal in the power play. And, and Max, you talked about that diametrically opposed approach. England in that power play, one horrible to bowl to for anyone. And it just looked at the class that Jason Roy and the confidence of Bairstow kind of have in that period. Um, the bit that's always worked in England's favour is that one, either one of them always has a bit of momentum behind them. And today, when Stokes came in, um, I think he didn't fulfil that Joe Root role very well. Um, I think that actually... Um, Joe Root is relatively underrated when it comes to getting the batsman who's kind of mid flow on strike. Like Joe Root accumulates and gets a few, gets a few runs. You don't see that he's, yeah. back, he's on he's on the thirty. Um, typically, kind of similar to what Cody does, I suppose. Um, but there is a bit where he always gets someone like Bearstow on strike against like, the good matchups. Um, what happened today was Stokes came in and he just he, he Kale Rahuled it. He ate a load of balls up. And then got out and was like, oh, great. Morgan then came in and did the same. Johnny Bairstow didn't face a ball for like three overs. And instantly, all of the momentum is just gone out of that great start for England. Um, that is not to give England an excuse, though, because they needed, what, 100 and, 170 runs or so? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was approaching five and over, wasn't it, at that point? Well, uh, and there is that bit. If you go ballistic from the start, give yourself that platform. You then have the luxury of scoring at one a ball if you really need to. You d like you don't get any more brownie points if you chase it down within forty two overs. Like there's, there's not a thing there. The the way England bat is to make it easy for the lower order to come in and hit those runs. And today we we soiled the bed to <laughs> put it politely. Yeah, um, that is sort of what happened. I mean, I, I actually. I don't think England will care that much that they lost that match, which will sound ridiculous. And and, and I, I, I also don't think that they'll be saying to themselves, oh, we could have just knocked them off at, at one and over, because that's not really how England want to play cricket. And Morgan was talking about this after the game. Um, to Morgan basically said a string of positive things about England. And, and as Morgan often does in his press conferences, he wasn't really talking to... Uh, the TV audience at home. He was basically saying to the players, here's what was good, here's what was bad. And he said that we were happy with what the bowlers accomplished. 317 was a really easy score or a very gettable score. Um, he liked the way England played. He wanted to reinforce the way they were playing and he wants the new players in the side to come in and play like Bairstow and Roy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think kind of what he's getting at is that, that basically he's a cricketing progressive. Like In, in Morgan's mind, the sport is always people in sport are always improving upon what came before uh, the arc of the cricketing universe. If you like is going towards bigger and bigger or better and better ODI scores and more and more explosive ODI batting. So to, to say, I think, Oh, maybe English should have knocked that off at five over. Yeah, sure. But like, what does that actually, I mean, I, I, I don't think that's what England want to be doing and well, i don't I mean, even that's think... fine isn't it if you're batting first or you yeah you go get off that 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 really fast start and you want to kick on and score as many runs as you can but when you're trying to chase 317 and you've basically broken the back of the chase like we were 12 12 overs ahead of india at that stage i know i know they you know they really kicked on at the end and, and caught caught some of that time up there but i mean you just kind of have to also have a little bit of of game sense about about where you are and i i agree with what ross said about um you know missing missing root in that role i don't actually like stokes at 3 at all it's very easy to say after he scored one from 11 and england lost the game but i it doesn't it doesn't sit well with me i think having him come in um further down with him and butler so it sort of gives you that kind of safety net if it does go a little bit wrong after that first um, innings, you you still then turn around and go, oh, we've got England four down. Oh wait, it's Stokes and Butler. <laughs> uh, See, the they, thing they is, still very much win this. 
the thing is, though, if anything, England not trying to press on from the position they were on is what cost them. Stokes scoring one off 11, that isn't exactly uh, coming in and trying to score from, from ball one, is it? I, yeah, I, no, I think I what Morgan is saying. What, no, I know, but what Morgan is getting at, and if you want to buy into the vision that Morgan is presenting as, as the leader in this scenario, if you want to buy into that vision, what Morgan is saying that your execution today, England, batters, wasn't good enough. Like mm. you can't score one off 11 balls and then be out you can't like you can't do what Josh Butler did and stand in front of your stumps and swipe hmm. across the ball like what 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 is he aiming to do in that situation Josh Butler that's that's the things that England need to consider the intent falls within that bracket as well because I think both Stokes and Morgan and and probably Butler um got out trying to score one or fewer and that in the, the way the way England want to play, they don't want to lose wickets trying to score one run. They don't really mind losing a wicket if they're trying to score six. That's that's the trade off they're accepting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think you know after that sort of platform England laid down, maybe it was complacency. Uh, maybe it's that some of the new players aren't very good. Maybe the roles that some of the batters were playing in don't fit their skill sets. But. I don't think it's the game plan or necessarily that they should have just taken their foot off the gas and scored at one uh, five, at five and over and one well, in the 50th It's not over. about taking your foot off the gas, is it? It's just about being a little bit, you know, uh, rather than blocking it and then getting ready to smack the ball again, just rotate. You can be, yeah. you can, you can score at one a ball and do it positively. Yeah, but there, but there's also a bit, Max. You, you touched upon it a little bit. That India actually bowled well. There, yeah. there was there's a bit where England did bat relatively poorly, but credit has to go to the Indian bowlers again in the middle overs, having a plan, bowling to it. Um, it was the debutant uh, Krishna um, who came yeah. in. He was battered by Besto in the uh, power play. Like he, I think one of the overs might as 20, well have got twenty two. Yeah. 22 runs um and it was so dismissive and like, lesser bowlers and younger bowlers are definitely dis- and older bowlers are definitely disintegrated under that kind yeah. of pressure he came back had a bit about him chirped off bear stone all that kind of stuff like it was really good to see and i thought actually he picked up some really good wickets um the bag carrier that is the core bowled brilliantly again like who would have thought and jack i think you tweeted about it saying that who would have thought that uh, Takur would have been one of the key match white ball uh, match winners for this India side. Not not too many people would have called that, I don't think. No, they, and they were good. And what I thought was probably sort of, or possibly slightly interesting about today's game is that as opposed to the the T twenties, India were able to wrestle control back in the match by basically bowling a kind of test match, hit the top of the stumps length. Mm. Um, as well as sort of bouncing out Morgan, which has happened before, of course. But that that seemed to work quite well. Why do you think that was, Max? Uh, I think possibly a little bit of the, the Jew coming into play. So I think uh, with the Butler wicket, you could argue that perhaps the ball got on, got on him a little quicker than he expected. And they were also bowling a lot of cross seam. So that uh, when you when you're hitting that line, that length and that line when you're bowling cross seam, you've always got the you know, option of either the ball skidding on a little bit quicker off the face of the ball or, or coming off the off the seam and getting a little bit um a little bit big. So I think I think uh the, the Bersto wicket, while it was uh not a great shot and the ball wasn't brilliant, they sort of uh gave him that was it it was Thacker, wasn't it? Gave himself a bit of a margin for error because it was it was arguably a half tracker, but he bowled it cross seam and it got a little bit uh big on Bersto at the at the bat and he sort of it hit the splice a bit. Um, so that's the sort of thing that, you know, when when one thing isn't working, it stopped swinging and then the full balls were disappearing to all parts. You, you change it up. And I think India did that well. And I think it was a good, um, probably a good understanding of your own conditions that, that helped them get to that that point. A few more India points. They obviously played a slightly experimental team today, which included a couple of a debutantes. Um, we've seen both in the IPL, more of Krunal Pandya than uh, Prasith Krishna. Were you impressed by them, Ross? Yeah, so I kind of mentioned, I, I kind of liked the comeback from Krishna. I thought actually he showed a lot of character, um, as Brendan Rogers would be very proud of. Mm. Um, but there was just a bit about him, and he, he bowled in the right areas, bit of pace. It was very good. Um, Krunal Pandya had a day out, as far as he's concerned. As you say, he overperformed with the bat. Um, you've still got to hit the runs, regardless of where the ball's bowled, so fair play to him. Um, I think we saw in the... Um, 
with the, the cap giving ceremony for his debut with his brother. He, like, he was in te- floods of tears before the game, came off and was interviewed halfway through, was in floods of tears after that as well. Um, so it was a, clearly a huge moment. And, and Max, you mentioned that it was around kind of a, a bereavement in his family. Yeah. Um, but I thought he bowled well as well. I think he went at less than six and over, which is actually against his England side to right, isn't it? I thought he went for a slightly more than that. Um, but yeah, well, it wasn't too it bad. Was five, uh, 5.9, he went. Oh, went there there we he he pulled, pulled it back towards the end. Pulled it back, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, I thought I think both of them, them were good. Uh, I think, again, it demonstrates the depth India have got. Uh, a real plus point, I suppose, for India is that Boomer and Jadeja weren't there again. <laughs> um, and I think particularly that probably hurt India today in that power play. Cause you, you, you think that probably Bumrah is going to bowl three or four of those overs. Um, He's not Johnny going Bairstow, for 22 off an over. Is well, he? yeah, like he might go for the, the odd 10. Um, Bairstow will still try and do that, but it's a much riskier shot and he's mm. probably going to get fewer balls to, to do it off. And you think Jadeja might bowl one or two in the, in the power play as well, which against two right-handers would probably have slowed England down slightly. So, uh, I think what is what is disappointing, but obviously Rohit's going to be out. Uh, Shreyas Iyer also out injured, um, well, dislocated his shoulder by the looks of things. Yeah, um, but that does mean there's going to be an opportunity for our boy Sky, surely. <laughs> so uh, possibly. I mean, he nearly dropped the easiest catch of all time, didn't he, off Roy today? So uh, hopefully he's he's more with it. Than... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the shrub will come in, at the, come in at the top of the order, no doubt. Yeah, um, it was a bad day for shoulders and quite a good day for catches by subs as well, wasn't it? There Were, were there <laughs> three of those today? Yeah, the, the, the Sam Billings one, there, there's sometimes that there is just, just let it go for the boundary. And this is speaking to a guy who has gone full throttle through a fence. So sometimes you just got to be just like, it's going to go for four. Like, he lost out to the IPL last year, missed out on the World Cup as well because of his shoulder injury. Like, what are you doing there, mate? That just have a bit about you. I don't know. With Morgan in charge, you might never play for England again if you let one go. That is true. And the final thing, though, and this is probably a, a, a negative for India and a positive for England. Obviously, India's grand plan in cricket at the moment is to lose the first match of every series they play in <laughs> uh, so that they can get the comeback hype machine rolling and then, you know, like come back, win 3 2 in the T20s, 4 1 in the tests. Uh, 2-1 away in Australia uh, probably some other comebacks in, <laughs> before that um, how nervous are they going to be with the lead are they good leaders I don't know if they're good leaders Ross uh, I think the underdog spirit is uh, is, is going to abandon them right there's uh, they're just like, they're they're ahead they don't they, like does Virat Kohli have the nous to lead his men up against it can he motivate them who knows um, I think what is interesting though is uh, how much England are just not scared of cold deep Yadav like, I'm not sure he should be picked against playing um, for India against England. There is just no I don't f- think he should be playing for India. Yeah, th- but he, there is no fear factor of him anymore. And there is just a bit where he leaks runs against England because he doesn't put the pressure on, um, especially against uh, the likes of Johnny Bairstow, who, uh, who, well, who had to say he was brilliant today, Johnny Bairstow. Yeah, well, the working theory with Coldeep Yadav is that he was brilliant when he came into t- into international cricket because people didn't know that much about him. Uh, then somewhere between 2018 and 2019, people figured out sort of what he was doing. Um, and what I have heard is that basically he bowls so slowly that he's absolutely no risk to batters, like top-level batters, off the pitch. So if he can't beat them with the flight of the ball, he basically is just a punching bag. And so what sort of happened between in that 2018-19 period is that instead of trying to play him on the front foot, basically everyone just sort of sits on the delivery, waits for it to bounce, and then hits it as hard as they can. <laughs> um, and that's, that's a problem for him because because the, the way he bowls, like unless he does start bowling quicker, which might not you know be possible, some people just can't do that. Um, he it it it, it, it it's you know it, like once you've been worked out, what do you do to, to that, mix things up? Is that why he's added the knee high full toss to his repertoire? <laughs> well, that probably doesn't help. I mean, like once you start getting smacked, then you have to. Th- so he knows, for, for example, that if he doesn't bowl really full, then people are just going to wait for him. It's going to be slow off the pitch. Doesn't matter which way it's going to spin good batters will hit it so therefore he has to bowl fuller than his natural length the length he has learnt to play international cricket at 
that causes problems because then his length goes and he becomes even more hittable. Um, and I think to, to conceptualize this just slightly more, if you look modern day, the best limited overs, white ball, well, same thing, leg spinner, who is it? Rashid. Rashid Khan. Well, <laughs> Rashid Khan is the answer, yeah. <laughs> Bowls a lot faster, and that means he can that beat That is, of people. course, the Rashid you meant, isn't it, Ross? Yeah. <laughs> he can beat people both through the air and off the pitch. It doesn't deviate. He might not spin it as much as Kuldeep Yadav. He might not get as much dip and stuff. But the the pace the ball goes through the hitting zone in white ball cricket is too much for most batters to play. Yeah. Um, and, and it gives him more ways to, to, to win battles. Um, the, the other the other thing about Rashid Khan is he has a really weird release point, which makes it almost impossible to see out the hand. Well, do you know? Well, that's but 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 that's that's kind of true. Rashid Khan basically is a finger spinning leg spinner. We've, yeah. we've gone on a on a on a, on a diversion. Bit of a tangent here. <laughs> but if he if if you watch videos of how he releases the ball, and he did one with uh, Bosch Trascoth- 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 yeah. all people, yeah, uh, at Hove, and basically he the ball comes out at the same release point. But depending on which spin finger he spins the ball off, it goes one of two ways. Now, when he's he's doing that and bowling at sort of ninety five k's k per hour, per hour instead of seventy five, like Coldeep Yadav, you don't need to be doing an awful lot with the ball off the pitch to 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 leave a batsman completely clueless. Yeah, um, fellas, we've got a few tweets in, some questions, and then we'll say what we think will happen in the next game. If that works for you, that's yep. good. Right, uh, so first question, and this has come from Rob Legg. I wonder who that could be. Uh, <laughs> uh, is it the pitches or the mentality of test batting which is stopping Bairstow from producing this kind of innings in test cricket or this style of innings in test cricket? Max, what do you think about that? Uh, well, it's, it's something it's something you've uh, you touched upon in some other shows, isn't it, Jack? I think it's sort of the way, the way he sets him up himself up to play in white ball cricket versus red ball cricket is slightly different and uh, I think just the amount the ball moves makes it more likely that he's going to get out in in uh, in test cricket it's the same we've seen it with a number of players people like uh, Jason Roy who've given it a go and just the way that the way they set up isn't quite as suited to to the red ball game so you know um, white ball cricket is definitely uh, ideal for, for Besto and his his approach and it's just yeah, probably, probably the ball and and the conditions uh, as much as, well, yeah. that and the technique, I, the combination of the two. I actually see innings today from Bairstow as an absolute vindication of the changes he made. Bairstow could have had a career as a kind of average, maybe slightly above average, Test international quality batter who yeah. played some white ball cricket and was probably slightly underwhelming, but okay, you know, in in white ball cricket. Um, instead, he is like you know, top two top or three tier, in the yeah. world uh, when it comes to opening the batting in, in white ball cricket. And he's not so good at red ball cricket, although we still give him a go because he's a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and from Yorkshire. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, like, Max, you explained what the problem was there, but I think good decision from Johnny. And like, hopefully we see a few more innings like that from an England perspective. Yep. Uh, question from G. Ross, you can answer this one. Would David Milan at number three have guided England home? I'm uh, not sure if we're guided to England home, but um, I think the um, it's fair to say that Moeen Ali didn't really come off today, did he, at all? So uh, <laughs> there is a bit where... There's lots of actually, hate for Moeen Ali at the moment saying, actually, he's just lost it. And there's there's a there's a, just a thing around his bowling, which he just doesn't have it now. And so if that is the case, and that's why he's not been playing in the um, T20s, and they're just hoping that he finds some kind of spark in his ODI, it's a huge thing. Um, it is quite surprising that Milan doesn't, have a look in here um, because actually you would have thought that slotting in at three today would have been a pretty good place to be um, but the the merry-go-round that is the England selection process I mean we don't know who's getting off and who's getting on do we yeah I mean I, I, I think this ODI team are a lot better with Root um, yeah. in at number three and, and there's two reasons for that one he's an insurance policy opener if one of the two openers goes ballistic and gets it wrong like it's very rare that Root fails so you've got that. So as you sort of said, and this, this will sound like it's counter to what I was saying earlier, but Root is able, but what Root's really good at is, is scoring off lots of balls in the same way as Coley, I suppose, not quite Coley calibre, but he's able to score off lots of ball. And that, that means you don't get bogged down at any point. Um, so yeah, you know, Root, Root does improve this side. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Nico Marsh, do England 
slash Morgan have an issue with viewing the ODI and T20 formats too similarly? Ross? Um, I, I don't think so, actually. I think the uh, approach that they've taken to ODI, ODI cricket from that um, New Zealand uh, series way back when has been brilliant. Like they've, they've completely changed how exciting ODI cricket actually is. And yes, some of the really tense 250 kind of matches are, are, are brilliant. But actually, there's a high chance that England break the 500 runs barrier in an ODI kind of cricket. That is kind of what they're seemingly aiming for. You can't say that when we obliterated Australia um, in one of those ODIs when we hit, what, was it 480? I thought I think we ended up with. But that is just is, is brilliant. So I think their approach to ODI cricket is is in, is entertaining and it's paid off with a World Cup. So and yeah, they, well, currently top of the rankings until India beat us three 0 as well. So it's it's vindicated. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'd probably add to all of that is that in ODI cricket in particular, there's a tendency to think that you need to build a platform because that guarantees you a reasonable score, and then you can maybe in the last ten overs try and do something. The, the problem is so many teams are capable of chasing 250 to 280 now. Like, and I mean this probably down to like Ireland. Ireland would fancy. I mean, that Ireland got over 300 against England in the summer, actually. So many teams would fancy those scores that you're not... What's the point, really, <laughs> in, in aiming for them? Or being like, oh, let's guarantee 250, lads. It's like playing against Barcelona and be like, oh, let's guarantee we score one goal. It's, it's not... <laughs> you're probably... That's probably the wrong way of thinking about it. You need... You need to be thinking, well, let's get more. If we get more, then they can't get more. Uh, obviously, today, England lose a game getting 250 playing the other way, but that's chasing and that's slightly differently. different. Yeah. I, I think you really see the England ODI machine in full work in order or at full steam when they're batting first and they, they just keep going. Um, so are you surprised, that... actually, that having won the toss, we put India in? I don't... I think... I think that there is... I I am a little bit, um, particularly as I know this England team are all like, oh, we really want to chase. But most of the data suggests that in, in day night cricket, you are actually you're better off batting in the day when the light is better. And I, I know there's dew factor and people love talking about dew factor hmm. in uh, in India with the ball. But the, the reality is that it is, it is, it's harder to see at night. <laughs> I, I, I think it's even more fundamental than that. I just don't think that Morgan has the trust in that bowling unit to defend a total, like as, as well, well, well as, maybe as they can do. Maybe, but I, I, I think they, they're kind of looking at it the wrong way, and um, they all. I, I, I think anything that's binary like that, where where the answer is always we bat second, probably doesn't take into account like all of the factors that go into that decision. Um, be like, be like saying, well, I always call heads because you know heads is best when you toss <laughs> coins it's like well what's you would like what happens if it's a coin with two tails um <laughs> anyway that was a tangent um mask 101 uh i think we'll do this this will probably be the last question is there anyone in the england side besides root who can impersonate root max <laughs> well, uh, I I don't I've yet to see one. I'll be honest. I don't I don't think there's. I mean, well, we we briefly mentioned Milan, didn't we? That he might be the the person that would slot in that role best from the players that England have got uh, available at the moment. But there's no one around in England that can do that job quite like Root can, um, or to the level of an impersonation. So I, I I'd say short answer no. Fair enough, Ross. It's it's just a it's just again the England selection rotation policies are fucking shambles and it's just a, like the fact that Chris Wokes was on the tour for Sri Lanka and on the tour for all the Test matches and he's not playing in this and Joe Root one of our best ODI players and they're saying that oh we're looking to take this a bit more seriously it just undermines the whole thing um, and I think saying oh Stokes should be back at three mm. in this I think it's just, it's just it's just a waste of time yeah I um. I don't know. I don't, I I didn't love it. I think I, I, I think the thing it. with Root is just that it takes that it takes a, an extra bit of class to be able to score. Like you said, he scores off all, most balls. It takes that extra bit of class to be able to score off balls that <laughs> nor ordinarily would be a dot ball for most batsmen and and mm -hmm. keep it ticking over. And I don't think we've got anyone else that is as good a or close to as good at that. 
I would say the one person who possibly could do it is Morgan, actually. But he seems mm. to have taken his game in a slightly different direction. Well, uh, if you bowl at Morgan in the corridor just outside off stump, he can't even hit it. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the other direction. Is he's certainly a little bit more powerful than he used to be. But um, I, I don't know. It's, it is a weird one. It is a weird one. England will need to look at that, but probably not anytime soon because I think Joe Root... You know, it's, it's another one of those examples. By not being here, he's suddenly yeah. a lot better. <laughs> I think, uh, think Nasser Hussain even said it on uh, on commentary. <laughs> uh, like last thing to wrap up, then, boys. Uh, the next ODI is on Friday, so we've got a couple of days off, and we can we'll enjoy that um, before we're back together. And maybe we can do the show with a beer in hand. Oh, that'd be nice. Who is going to win, Max? Uh, England are going to come roaring back and uh, and take it to a decider. Oh, Ross. Uh, I was impressed with the way Roy and uh, Besto kind of um, played today, and it was great to see them kind of back both in form. Um, so actually, I think yeah, let's back England for the to bring it to one one and set up a uh, an interesting finale um, because England's middle order can't fail that badly again. All the reasons I said India will win this series three 0 still stand. I don't really trust the backups. I don't really like where, what the roles that the, the more senior players are being forced to play. I. I I think there's only a few people doing what they would normally do in the team. Adil mm. Rashid, Jason Roy, Morgan and Bairstow. Uh, and that means that England are a little bit confused about what's going on. So I, yeah. I, I expect them to lose on Friday. Uh, um, Reese Top is going to come in and, and do the business. <laughs> Ross, messages for our listeners then. Let's wrap this up. Like and subscribe, whichever, wherever it is. Um, and then follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Cricket Pod. Um, and obviously leave your comment, get in touch on Twitter. We love hearing from you. Thanks very much for listening. Goodbye. See you later. You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. I think it was a disgraceful performance and I think it should never be permitted to happen again. That is very good. <laughs>